said if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I, I guess I'm an, yeah, I'm a, I'm an adultery. Huh? I don't watch porn. Yes, you do. No, yes, I don't. Yes, he does. Have you had sex before marriage? No. Really, babe? Never. Are we married? Are you married right now? <laughs> So, Sean, this is ever over there, and she's had a little too much to drink, so she may be a little... No, I'm fine. I have not had too much to drink. Okay. <laughs> she's had just a couple. Sean, is there an afterlife? Uh, I believe so. Do you have a bucket list? Um, yeah. So what do you want to do before you die? Everything. I want to drive a, a, a trophy truck. What does that mean? It's an off-road vehicle that has like unlimited suspension and unlimited horsepower. Where does that saying come from, bucket list? I have no idea. I think it's from a movie that came out a number of years ago called The Bucket I List. Love that movie. Oh, that's where it came from? Yeah. Uh, it, it wasn't a saying before that? Yeah, in a sense it was. It's, it's from a, a book from many years ago where a man committed suicide. He hung himself, he got on a bucket so and kicked it. Yeah. yeah. Kill. So when someone kicks the bucket, they die and, they die. Yeah. and you've got a bucket list. Are you afraid of death? No. Come on, everyone's afraid of death. I'm not afraid of death. Afraid That's why I want to drive a trophy truck. Do you have a death wish? Not a death wish, but I'm not afraid of death. Well, let me put it another way. Do you love life? Of course. It's uh, sensible to be afraid of what can kill you, and death is called the Grim Reaper, and it's going to take your life. So you should do everything you can to find out what death is yeah. and what you can do to counter it. Right. Wouldn't that make sense? Sure. There's a Bible verse that says the wages of sin is death. Have you ever heard that? I haven't. Death. I'm not a church person. Yeah. Death is uh, what God pays you for your sins. Right. Like a judge gives a criminal the death sentence. He says, you have murdered three people. We're paying you in the death sentence. This is what you've earned. This is what you deserve, your yeah. wages. And sin is so serious to God, he's given us capital punishment. Uh -huh. That's the cause according to the Bible. Do you think you're that bad that God should put you to death for your sins? No, I think I'm a good person. We're all gonna die. What do you mean, put you to death it's for your sins? Like we're all gonna die anyway. So, like, what does that mean? Like, girl was watching a sheep eat green grass, and she thought how nice and white the sheep looked against the green grass. Uh -huh. Then it began to snow, and uh -huh. she thought how dirty the sheep looked against the white snow. Right. Same sheep, different yeah. background. But yeah. And when you and I compare ourselves to the background of man's standard, we come up reasonably clean. Yeah. But when we compare ourselves to God's standard, the snowy white righteousness of the Ten Commandments, uh -huh. it shows that we're not as clean as we thought. Right. Makes okay. sense? Makes sense, yeah. So you think you're a good person? I do. Okay, let's see how you do against God's law. Okay. How many lies have you told in your life? Probably thousands. So what do you call someone who's told thousands of lies? <laughs> um, a liar. So what are you? I guess I'm a liar. Now, do you still think you're a good person? I, I do. Ever stolen something? Um, no, I don't steal. Have you ever used God's name in vain? That's the third commandment. What does that mean, like, saying, like, <laughs> like Yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I've said it on accident. Would you use your mother's name as a cuss word? No. Tell me why not. Because I just wouldn't. Why I, not? Because it's, it's not a normal saying. Yeah, but you, you respect your mother. You wouldn't use her name in the, in the place of a filth word to express disgust. Uh, you're right. I don't know why we do that. Hit your thumb with a hammer and you want to say something filthy like the S word. But instead you take God's holy name and use it in his place. Why which do we do that? Well, it's called blasphemy and there's a reason we do it. Yeah. It's in John chapter 7. Jesus said, the world hates me because I testify of his deeds that they're evil. And there's no greater evidence that we hate God than we use his name as a cuss word. Right. And yet he gave us life. Yeah. Called blasphemy, it's punishable yeah. by death in the Old Testament. Yeah. Sean, I appreciate your honesty <laughs> and, your, and your patience with me. <laughs> now, here, here's another one. Okay. This one will nail you to the wall. Do you still think you're a good person? Okay. I still, uh, yeah, I'm a great person. Okay. I mean, morally good. Morally good. Okay. Jesus said, if you look at a woman and lust for her, you commit adultery with her in your heart. Have you ever looked at a woman with lust? I, I guess I'm an, yeah, I'm an, I'm an adultery. Huh? I don't watch porn. Yes, you do. No, yes, I don't. Yes, he does. No. You had sex before marriage? No. Really, babe? Never. Are we married? Are we married right now? <laughs> Are we married? Yeah, so she's being like your conscience. Just, yeah, she's being, she's being, being like, like, like your conscience. Yeah. She's just telling the truth. So, she's Sean. Telling the truth, yeah, because I fear the Lord. Now, listen to this. Here's a summation of your little court case. Uh -huh. You have told me, and this is for you to judge yourself, okay? You've told me that you were lying, and I can't believe you when you say you've never stolen because you told me you're a liar. Blaspheming, <laughs> fornicating, adulterer at heart. Do you still think you're a good person? I'm a great person. Okay. 
Yeah. You know what you're doing? What am I doing? You're adding self-righteousness to your sins. <laughs> That's even worse, huh? <laughs> it's a really bad one. So here's where we're going with this. If God judges you by the Ten Commandments on Judgment Day, we've looked I'm at four. Hell, I, know. <laughs> I guess I'm going to hell then. Uh. I trust you're laughing out of nervousness because that breaks my heart. Uh, Sean, I've just uh, met you, but I love you. I care about you. <laughs> and I'd hate you to end up in hell. Uh, you know what? I'm going to end up where I end up. I hope I'm going to heaven, but... Um, well, it's not God's will that any perish. The Bible says that. He has no pleasure in the death of the wicked. Yeah. Tell me, what did God do for guilty sinners so we wouldn't have to end up in hell? Do you know? Um, he did for us on the cross. He died for us on the cross. And right. then he, like, for us to believe in him. And I believe that he, he was risen on the third day. I believe. I believe with all my life. Okay. So let me just talk to Sean for a minute. What she's saying is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. Now, most people know that, but they don't know this. The Ten Commandments are called the moral law. You and I broke the law. Jesus paid the fine. Do you remember his last words on the cross? No. Just before he dismissed his spirit, he said, it is finished. Why do you think he said that? I have no idea. Like I said, I'm not a church, I'm not a church going person. I, I am today. I started today. Well, you and I broke God's law. Jesus paid the fine. And when he was saying it is finished, he was saying the debt has been paid. Uh -huh. Sean, if you're in court and someone pays you fine, a judge can let you go even though you're guilty. You can say, Sean, stack us being fines. Real That's serious, true. but someone's paid him. You're out of here and can do that, which is legal and right and just. Yeah. Even though you're guilty, you walk because someone paid you fine. Yeah. And even though you and I are guilty before God uh -huh. of heinous crimes in his sight, he can let us live forever. He can take the death sentence off us yeah. because Jesus paid the fine in his life's blood rose again on the third day, and if you'll simply repent of sin, turn from sin and trust in Jesus, like you trust a parachute, yeah. you have a promise from the God that cannot lie, he'll forgive your sins and grant everlasting life. And the reason can't, God can't lie is because he's without sin. The Bible says right. it's impossible for God to lie. That means when he says, I'll forgive your sins and grant you everlasting life as a free gift, uh -huh. you can bank on it, you can rest on it, yeah. you can trust it because okay. he's faithful. Is this making sense? Yeah, makes me feel a little better. Yeah, well, if a doctor tells you you've got a terminal disease and you freak out when you see you've got the symptoms, yeah. that's scary. But if he says, hey, I've got a cure in my pocket, yeah. then it makes sense. And I've tried to give you the cure in the gospel. Right. Death is your disease, sin is the disease, uh -huh. and the cure is trust in Jesus. Yeah. You gonna think about what we talked about? I sure will. I learned a little bit today. A little bit? I learned a lot. Do you have a Bible at home? I don't. Can I give you a publication we put out called The Bible's Four Gospels? Sure. Will you read it? I will. Boy, I'm so, I'm so encouraged that you listened. <laughs> and uh, I do hope you really think about it. And I'd like you to think about it with this sense of sobriety. Okay. You could die tonight. I could. 150,000 people die every 24 hours. So this is yeah. deadly serious. Yeah. And I want to ask you one more question before we cease. Okay. Would you sell one of your eyes for a million dollars? No. Would you sell both for a hundred million? Nope. And yet, your, and yet your eyes are merely the windows of your soul. The real Sean looks out these windows, so if your eyes were without, are without price, how much is your soul worth? Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? So that's the sense of sobriety I'd like you to think about it with. How precious your life is. Yeah and how it could be taken from you in an instant and you find yourself in death, in your sins, heading for hell. That'd be horrific. So you're going to think about it with that sense of sobriety? I sure will. Definitely. Okay, let me get you that, that uh, Bible's full Gospels, okay? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. So what were you just saying? Um, she just went to a Christian church for the first time today. Today? Yes. Did you go with her? I did. So this is kind of strange that suddenly I come along and share the gospel. It was kind of strange that you showed up today and started telling us that. Suddenly a few things they had said began to make sense. I'm not a church going person. I, I am today. I started today. Um, he did for us on the cross. He died for us on the cross. And right. then he, like for us to believe in him. And I believe that he, he was risen on the third day. I've noticed in the comment section that many of you say that you're praying for me as I go out to share the gospel each day. And lately I'm seeing evidence of God's hand. So thank you for praying. And please remember to pray for this dear couple. 
When I go into a menswear store for the first time, I really appreciate it when an attendant says, if you're looking for jackets, our most popular items are on that rack over there, and they're on special at the moment. So, welcome to our store. Here's some of our most popular tracks, and they're on special at the moment. We call this the Starter Kit. It's made up of 100 of each track and 50 Ten Commandment coins. These coins are really easy to give out. Just begin with a warm good morning and then say something like, I've got a gift for you. It's a coin with the Ten Commandments on one side and the Gospel on the other. I've even tossed a handful of these on the sidewalk among teenagers as I rode by, and you should have seen them fight to get one. This is the good person test in comic form, and who can resist reading a comic? Then there's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners, and these really are funny. Just say, this will lift your day. It's 101 of the world's funniest one-liners, and of course it contains the gospel. And finally, our super popular million dollar bill. Just say, did you get your million? People love these. Or you could just put it down somewhere, it's sure to get picked up. These 300 tracks and 50 coins would normally cost $38, but they're on special in the starter kit for just $29. Go to livingwaters.com, click on the store, and then tracks.